When you look at a map of the world, you see where we are here and where the islands of Japan are over here. So Japan is to the east, a long way east too, past Middle East all the way to the Far East. So when people talk about the Far East, this is the part of the world they mean where Japan is. But for us in California, instead of going east to Japan, it's a lot faster to go west. And halfway across the Pacific, you pass the International Date Line. So when you arrive in Japan, it's actually a day later. There are thousands of islands that make up Japan, but most people live on just four of them. The one with the most cities by far is Honshu, which is where Tokyo is. One of the first things you notice when you arrive in Tokyo is that signs are in Japanese, so it might take a while to figure out how to buy a train pass. And you have to exchange your American dollars for Japanese yen first. Most of the trains in Tokyo are underground and subway stations. This is inside one of the stations so you can see just how popular they are. Trains go all over the country and really fast too. So once you finally figure out how to buy your ticket, it's totally worth it. The trains get so crowded during rush hour, there are workers whose job is to push passengers in so more can fit. This man is one of the people pushers. They wear white gloves and wait for trains to arrive, and after everyone gets off, they push as many people inside as they can. So the trains leave full. One of the places you can take a train to is Disney Sea. Just like in Disneyland, California, Disney Sea is crowded with people waiting to get in before the park opens. But what's different is how much cleaner the park is. We never saw any trash on the ground or any workers picking it up. At Disney Sea, all of the rides have a water theme. So instead of Autopia, they have Aquatopia. And even though the rides and shows are in Japanese, some have these little translators they'll give you if you ask. But the attractions weren't the only things different about Disney in Japan. Popcorn buckets were another thing. Popcorn is huge here. Every year they have a different bucket for sale. And if you bring it, you get all the popcorn filled at a discount. So all over the park, people carry their popcorn bucket. This year's bucket has a strap for your neck, which is great. So you can walk around and feed yourself all day long. And if you drop a piece, it goes right back in the bucket. That's probably why the ground is so clean. But the best part is... It's flavored! They have strawberry popcorn, chocolate popcorn, sea salt popcorn, black pepper popcorn, and then some crazy flavors like soy sauce and butter. Curry popcorn, milk tea popcorn, what? But whatever the flavor, people line up to buy it and carry it. But of all the things we saw that were different at Disney Sea, the biggest was Duffy the Bear. He's everywhere. If you didn't know him before, you definitely know him after. He comes in all sizes and gets dressed up and carried around the park. There's even little shelves you can put your Duffy on to take his Disney Sea photo. But you don't have to go to Disney Sea to learn about Japanese culture. All you have to do is walk around in Japan, because if you do, you'll probably find a temple or shrine. They're kind of like Duffy. They're everywhere. Shrines are places of worship for the Shinto religion. When you visit a shrine, there's some rituals you're supposed to do, like bow twice, clap your hands two times, ring a bell to awaken the kami spirits, then say a prayer to pay respect to the kami, or to pray for good fortune, then you bow again. It was a lot to remember, so we asked our guide to go over it again with us. Two claps. Bow two times. Okay, ready? So two bows. Yes. Then two claps, right? Yeah. Then you put the money in. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ring the bell. Remember the gods. By ringing the bell. Ringing the bell. Then you offer your prayer. Yeah. And you bow. Shrines have purification fountains in front of them. You are supposed to use the ladle to wash your hands and mouth before you pray. Another thing you see outside every shrine is a gate called a tori that looks like a giant bird perch. In fact, tori means bird perch. And you also see these little pieces of paper tied to wires. At first, we didn't know what they were for, 
but then we'd learn that they were actually fortunes. It's a custom called Omakuji. The way it works is that you put a coin in the offering box and shake a metal container that has a bunch of sticks in it. The sticks all have numbers on them that match the numbers on these little wooden drawers. You pull out a stick and then find the matching number on one of the little drawers. There's a lot of the drawers so it takes a while to find the right one. Then you take a piece of paper out of the box that has your fortune on it. What does it say? You have a, you have a desire to be superior to all others and to build a dignity and identity and satisfactory income. Riding the ocean horse are seen in front within your control. If you are a strong warrior, you can catch and control the whole country by just... Besides shrines, there's a lot of temples in Japan. I used to think shrines and temples were pretty much the same, but they're not really. In a shrine, they practice Shintoism, and they pray to nature spirits, which is called animism. In a temple, they practice Buddhism, and they pray to Buddha, which is usually a large statue. If you take one of the Japanese bullet trains from Tokyo, you can visit one of the biggest Buddhas in Japan in an hour. It's the great Buddha Amida. Our book says one sect of Buddhism called the Pure Land Buddhists look to Lord Amida for a happy life after death. Another difference is shrines are noisy. You clap your hands and ring a bell. In a temple, you're supposed to pray silently. And shrines have the purification fountains. But in front of the temples, there are big pots of incense burning. The smoke is supposed to have healing powers, so you wave it on the part of your body that needs healing. But the smoke kind of burns. Oh, that hurt my eyes. Something else they do a lot in Japan is origami. I made a samurai helmet. And Japanese throwing stars that were sharp weapons that samurai warriors used to hide in their hand and throw out their enemies. Cool. Yay! Good? You did it. Oh, good I job. It was harder than it looks. Tea ceremonies are also popular. In a tea ceremony, everything they do has a special purpose. Oh, and the red cloth is called fukusa. It is used to purify instruments. There's just one other thing I want to share about Japanese culture. It's their toilets. Japanese toilets are like toilets of the future. Come on, I'll show you. When you open the toilet lid on the side of the toilet, you see a bunch of these buttons. As soon as you sit down, the toilet seats come to life. Sort of comes as a shock the first time you use them if you're not prepared. The seats are heated, they have sprinklers and blow dryers and all kinds of adjustments. And these were all over too, in the airport, train stations, and hotels. So if you ever go to Japan, make sure to check out the toilets.